So last night, I got to play the new Hextech Jarvan skin and give my thoughts on it as I played the games, you know, point out the good, the bad, the very ugly, and essentially, you know, decide whether or not I like this skin. And that led to people asking me about other skins, which ones were my favorite ones for Jarvan, you know, the best and the worst, which ones had the most problems, and point out every little thing about them I liked and disliked. And I actually had a lot of fun with that. So I decided why not make that into a video talk about my favorite champion skins and which ones I think are the best and which ones are the worst and so on. Now keep in mind that I do sort of give a you know take points away if a skin is not fitting and it's not a joke skin. So if a skin is meant to be jokey then then they go with some weird concept then that's totally fine like kitty cat rango or meow kai you know it's off the rails it's meant to be a joke but if the skin is supposed to be sort of serious and thematically it doesn't fit the champion or even if it doesn't fit the champion they don't go out of their way to make it you know uh, appropriate then they do lose points Cause like Odyssey Kane, for instance, is a very oddball thing for him to have because, you know, he's like a ninja shadow thing and they go with a the space theme. But they really work to make that fit. Like, you know, they went out of their way to make this super thematic and hilarious and that gives points. But then you have something like Arc Like Yorick, which is very lazily done and doesn't really fit because they didn't change anything to make it fit. They just say, like, here's some, you know, light and whatnot. You still have a very macabre kind of way of talking. So that's kind of where I take points away. Also, when I talk about the skins, it's going to be very, like, a tangent. So it's going to be rather informal and it might slip up. Only this part is recorded on a script, so... Now, the first skin to talk about is Commando Jarvan, one of the first skins ever released for Jarvan alongside the Dragon Slayer one. And honestly, out of the two, I think this one is better. And you know, one of the impressive things about it is that I think of a lot of skins that came out in Season 1, this skin actually holds up to this day. It does have some of that cartoony feel that Riot initially had with its champion releases and skins. Well, I mean, you know, guns on the shoulders. But, you know, it still looks pretty good. It has a really good color palette going on it. Like, it looks nice and sleek. Maybe a little bit of the head textures are a little bit odd. But it's still very serviceable. I do really wish to have, you know, a red chroma so I can run up, walk around as, you know, bison and such. But, you know, one can dream. It looks sleek. Very clean looking. So... It's a nice skin, and it has a, I guess you can say, unique lance for what it is. No unique visual effects, obviously, since it's one of the first skins for champions in the back, uh, back then, and they didn't really go too all out yet. So, it's a perfectly serviceable skin that still holds up, it looks clean, and honestly doesn't, you know... A lot of people probably still want to buy this skin, or at least will buy this skin, because it's one of his better ones. Next one up is Dragon Slayer Jarvan, which is one of the two that was originally released with his, uh, well, with Jarvan, obviously. So, looking at it in, uh, already, it's kind of goofy looking, right? Having two horns in the back and two horns in his head already. And there's a lot of things going on with the skin. Uh, its spear is definitely the coolest thing about it. It looks pretty gnarly, and also the flag he drops is, you know, looks cool too. Obviously, it doesn't have any up visual effects because, you know, again, one of the original releases. It doesn't help also that, you know, the spear sort of clips through the the bones or horns or whatever they are in this back. And that just sort of just a weird mismatch of colors. I think this one didn't age too well. I think it's one of the his worst ones right now simply because it's a red skin and there's our a better red skin that he has too and it's just kind of uh, uglyish looking I, I, I personally think the dragon slayer line except Zenzao's is kind of murky at best so you know it's serviceable but I would say it's probably one of the lesser ones now this is a skin I know a lot of people probably have not seen Dark Forge Jarvan is like a skin no one bought when it was released. It kind of came out of nowhere, it had a theme that's never been used, I don't think has been used since. Though they could possibly try doing something, you know, with it now if they really want to. I've always advocated that they try to go back to older skin themes that didn't work out, but maybe try and revive them with something cooler, which might retroactively make the other skins a little cooler. But whatever. So yeah, this is a skin no one's really seen. 
And I'll be very honest with you, it's the one skin I didn't buy of Jarvan. I just kind of ignored it because from the splash art, it's awful looking. And I remember initially it looked very dark and ugly, but you know, it looks a lot better now. Honestly, aside from maybe the horns, it looks really cool. It's a it's a nearly black, uh, fully black skin. The textures are nice on it. The spear is pretty gnarly, cool uh, looking, and so is obviously the flag. It also doesn't really have other uniqueness to it. You know, the shield is the same thing, but it looks very sleek, and it doesn't have the problem of you know the uh, the dragon one, dragon slayer one, except you know a little bit, but not too much. I actually think this skin deserves more attention because it went from completely looking ugly to actually looking really cool and honestly it it might be one of my preferred ones now just because i gave it a chance recently and i was impressed by it and you know from a distance you can it looks pretty cool you, like you know i guess the the outline of it looks pretty uh noticeable and whatnot so it's pretty cool I, that's as much as i could say it's a, it's redeemably cool now for one of the more exclusive skins in the game because it was from season one you know uh the victoria skin which a lot of people were surprised was a thing that was coming for them so they didn't even really play here's a fun story with that for the longest time i refused to play ranked because people were really awful to each other there and i didn't like that i played a few times and I just didn't like just uh, you know the the constant insults and whatnot because t season one of League of Legends was toxic. Like we have it toxic now, but back then it was super toxic. And then they announced, you know, if you get high gold, you'll get Jarvan, uh, an exclusive Jarvan skin. And I was like, time to play some ranked. Immediately jumped in there, got my placements, got gold, and stopped playing. I'm like, I got this beautiful skin, which is not beautiful. And they just called it and just called it quits. And this skin aged super badly. If you look at it, its textures in some parts are like disgusting. His hair is a, a mess. It's uh his face that that facial hair, oops sorry, that facial hair is not doing him any uh, you know, justice and that little spear or lance or whatever you wanna call it, it's you could see some parts of it like right in the middle. It's not looking good. Again, his there's not really much uniqueness to or to it either in terms of visual effects. It's just the exclusivity gets this champion. Um, I mean, gets the skin points, but it is a pretty ugly skin. Like even even back then when the textures were on par with everything else, when everything was going, people were like, "This this is a reward." It is a very ugly skin. <laughs> even by the standards back then so the only again the only thing it really has going for me is the story i have behind it and the fact that it is ex so exclusive because remember victoria skins this is the first one to come out people were not prepared for it and a lot of players from back then either stopped playing or didn't play jarvin or didn't get it so your chances of seeing victorious jarvin are very low so i guess that's the only real merit for it but it is fucking ugly Oh, uh, now we get to Warring Kingdoms Jarvan. So, what can I say about this skin? So, anyone who's ever played Dynasty Warriors or Romance of the Three Kingdoms knows Lubu and knows this is an obvious homage to Lubu. And just look at this skin. Like, the textures are wonderful. The weapon looks badass. The chess piece is obviously, like, the coolest one. Like, a lot of this skin works it pretty much is near perfect and the thing about it too is that it is extremely fitting for jarvan like ignoring lubu right ignoring lubu let's say demacia was a very asian themed country or that ionia or that jarvan was the king of ionia or whatever this is kind of what you would expect him to be translated to from his original base skin to this because this is very royalty looking this is very heroic royalty looking and also too it is the first of the jarvan skins to have you know some uniqueness to it with you know its visual effects obviously with its ultimate having this little fire thingy although it looked a bit rougher initially now it you know it, it looks the way it does it's a really good skin 
the color palette is obviously really good red and black kind of a classic combination and then obviously you can see some of the little cracks in his armor sort of to signify that he's been you know in battle damage you know basically wear and tear of actual battle and obviously no one i don't know if people give credit to but his are like his boots and his arms or i mean his gauntlets look pretty cool you can tell them from a distance too obviously not as much from here but you know it's still really nice nice to look at but one of the cooler things about it is the feathers on his head from a distance or from zoomed out you can see them very clearly they move individually essentially this skin has a lot of things going for it and they all work out Again, the, the story behind it, the homage to it, the fact that thematically it fits him if it was a very, you know, if it translated to a different kind of culture for Jarvan, it just works out. And it's the skin I use the most. So, yeah, obviously I'm a little bit biased probably because I, I love Dynasty Warriors and I love Jarvan and I, so therefore I love this combination a lot. But again, it works. All right, so what can be said about this skin? So, small spoiler alert for the end of the uh, video tier list that I was going to make about, you know, the best and the worst skins. This is the worst skin. Like, even amongst all skins in the game, this line is pretty goddamn ugly. It is super boring. The textures are just weird. It sort of looks blobby at some points. And, you know, again, it's just boring and bland. So the story for this one was is that Riot made season two skin champions or skins for the World League champions, right? And then at some point people were murmuring, why not make it for the season one champions? You know, back when season one, the world champions was basically played in something equivalent to like a garage. And it, doesn't, it wasn't really that big and League obviously wasn't that much of a spectacle yet. So... The fans pushed, they made these Reddit petitions, that kind of thing, and Riot eventually caved and pooped out these skins. And that's proper metaphor for that. They were, these skins were basically pooped out. They're boring and re really uninspired, and not to insult the team that won, but yeah, this is kind of what they were given, and what Riot kind of was forced to release. So, out of all the skins of Jarvan, this is the one I never want to play. It's just not, not a good-looking skin at all. So... Ugh. Oh boy, now it's time for Darkstar Jarvan, and if you guys follow me on Facebook or Twitter, you guys know I had a field day with this skin, because it looks cool, honestly, it looks really cool, although I kind of think it is a disservice without giving it more chromas, because probably different colors would have been really gnarly, you know, green, red, you know, red could have just been easily like a fire Jarvan skin, and visuals wise, when it comes to his effects, it doesn't look too bad, a little lazy with like his ultimate, you know, I felt it could have done a lot more with it, but overall, its appearance isn't that bad, it even has a little bit of that soul caliber thing going with the sword, the problem comes with its thematic, so Jarvan is like this princely, knightly, heroic kind of character, right? His voice lines give this, you know, for Demacia, I will destroy you kind of thing. The you know. But the problem is that the Void is supposed to be this weird, nightmarish, cold, inhuman place. Questionably evil, but maybe just super like, you know, they've transcended the morality of humanity, so they're just kind of like, mm, you know, again, inhuman. But his voice lines don't give that off. And what's worse is the voice filter given to him is more robotic, you know, than, it, than it's the void, than being nightmarishly void. So it, it just kind of seems like it ill-fitting. And not enough to support this idea that this theme could be made to work with Jarvan. Like I said, thematics can be made to work for champions as long as everything else around it is worked to, you know, make sure it fits. Like that one evil devil, uh, what's it called, Galio skin. They worked with the voice line there. They gave it a, you know, ghoulish kind of appearance or a ghoulish kind of, you know, way of playing. So it fits them or it fits enough. This one... They just kind of slapped on an appearance and visual effects and said, eh, you know, this is evil Jarvan. But no, it's sort of like, what kind of Jarvan is it? It's just like a costume Jarvan. And nothing really stands about, out about it or, or except, the, you know, the appearance. So as far as I'm concerned, I can't really feel anything when I play this except that it just kind of looks cool. And it's going to sound a little bit nerdy. 
that's not always enough for me. I kind of like the thematic, kind of like playing, you know, that kind of stuff out. So, again, sp splitting it up, it looks kind of cool with, you know, flame in the head. Almost, if you took his weapon away, you would almost think it's like arc-like brand, but whatever. It looks okay. Visual effects, eh, and everything else in that. It's, again, I would just say a missed opportunity by Riot to make a skin that could have been weird, but could have worked, but now it doesn't. Now for SSG Jarvan. First off, I'm just going to say this skin is absolutely beautiful. Like, the design on it, you can see like the weapon, cool, unique look. The shoulder pads, you know, said have a little bit of flowery design, but both the weapon and the shoulder pads change color. And you can notice this, obviously, from a distance as it moves. It's pretty unique to the skin, and I love that. The weapon designer already on its own, the halberd, is cool looking. Like, I love it. It's probably my favorite of the weapons that he has on par with uh, the Lubu one. You know, the design on it, sleek, he's kind of have... It's honestly pretty interesting that he's kind of like a low armor skin in this one. Maybe, you know, has plate armor below it. I can't really tell. It doesn't really detract too much from it. But it has unique effects, you know, a little bit of uh, blue stabby with a spear. The flag looks real, I was going to swear there, but really cool. A little bit of smokiness to it. I love that. The shield has a little bit of a flowery design, flowery design and has a different sound effect too than most of the shields. And then the ultimate is a little odd looking, but at the same time, it's very noticeable, which is actually a really uh, good plus to it. Really noticeable, good color, also a little bit of smoky effect, looks very porcelain, like some kind of, you know, almost alien, like those kind of things you see in games where, you know, the aliens have this really fine sculptured out porcelain or looking things that they lay about everywhere, almost elvish, but... You know, I like it. I like the crown that he has. I like the sleekness of it. The color combination for it. It's probably one of his better skins. The only really negative I have about it, the biggest negative actually, is the splash art. It looks like if without the spear, it would be a, a, a Trindomir skin. Like, you can't really tell who it is until you take, you know, just add a spear to it. it you know, it's just kind of... I guess that's the kind of the weakness of it. It reminds me of some skins, or I mean, some uh, tier sets from uh, World of Warcraft 2, also. Or not Warcraft 2, but World of Warcraft from the. I forgot what they were called. Basically, the Malagos area, essentially. The whole magic. The magic people there. It reminds me a little bit about that. So. If you were to take this skin and take away the whole SSG from it, you could almost say this is like a Mage Warrior Trindomir skin. It sort of looks like that, like a Mage Warrior or Mage Slayer or something like that. I like them, a Magic Charvin skin. You know, if he pulls it off looking like, you know, a temple, uh, Magic Templar thing or whatever I'm going with here. Just Magic, Magic Charvin. And with that, it works out. Okay. Okay, now it's time for Hextech Jarvan, and I don't even know where to start. So when I was playing this skin last night, I was super hyped up because the splash art is really cool looking, and I was excited to play a new Jarvan skin that, you know, like Darkstar Jarvan is a little bit odd in terms of thematics, but I thought maybe it could work out. Nah, I don't think so. So... First, I want to talk about the Hextech line, or the Gemstone line, actually. That's more appropriate. They're controversial in the fact that gemstones are really hard to find, and they're very, like, I've, I've been playing since the, the loot boxes came out, and they introduced Hextech Annie, and I've only gotten two gemstones. It's like, okay, so I've only had two. How would you get this skin legitimately? I only really have it through the league partner thing, and thanks right for that. And don't take it away because I'm trash talking the skin, but I honestly have to be well. I have to be honest about this. So visuals are initially on it. Okay, so what works and what doesn't? It looks sleek. All right, I like that it looks sleek. It looks clean. The color scheme is okay. It's not that bad, and that's kind of about it. I don't like how the weapon looks, it's a little too comical. In comparison to the rest, that looked kind of cool. Visual effects wise, the spear is okay, I guess, you know. I, I think out of all of them, it seems to be the least impactful. You know, SSG Jarvan looked pretty damn cool. 
this one's kind of boring. I mean, it has unique sound effect and whatever. The W is kind of same deal, less beautiful than the SSG one, but it's serviceable and it has its own sound effect too. Now, still going back to the visuals on just the skin itself, I don't know, I don't know what they thought about the head, but that face. This looks like it's it was jammed in there like they just said okay King Jarvan or Prince Jarvan we're gonna lube up your head because this thing ain't gonna fit right and they just sort of rammed it onto him and then the hair is just kind of dangling there it's really ugly and the worst part is that the hair is sort of like unkempt to one side for some reason like his face stares down to you and his hair is just sort of like crooked I don't know what is up with that the shoulder pads are also, in comparison to the rest, look really comically out of place. Like they're, fl look at that, you can see they're floaty. The rest I know some of them have that same issue, but with this one it just seems more jarring. Like look at his upper body, it's just kind of off looking, right? The the lower body, because of the shoulders, it sort of feels like he's a lot much, uh, he's a much weaker person. Like if you took off his chest piece, he'd basically be a scrawny, sh uh, shaggy looking character. So it just feels odd. His, his sword on its own, you know, the same basic thing. I think it's actually kind of boring. You know, again, SSG kind of raised the standards up a lot for these skins. So. It's it does not work for me, fam. His ultimate looks pretty cool, right? The uniqueness to it. It's it's probably the best part about it. His ultimate is, you know, obviously sci-fi magic, uh, magic hex tech or whatever. And he does have that unique uh, return. Uh, damn, that I, this recall is actually really pretty damn cool. But you can notice some of the problem that I was talking about here when you see it again. I just noticed it. And midway here, you can see how. Skinny he looks when he try jumps around, or when he raises his weapon. This is just an odd looking skin, and to me, it actually makes Jarvan feel or look weaker than he actually is. Would, the crime is that his splash art looks super cool, <laughs> makes his face look a lot sleeker in that splash art, and the color scheme will look a lot better. But when you actually play it, it really is not. I feel this skin line could have been serviced with, you know, with some more uniqueness to the voice. Not necessarily new voice lines. You know, a chroma set would have been really nice. Coincidentally, Jarvan doesn't really have any chromas other than that prestige one that came to his, you know, the Dynasty Warrior skin. I don't know. I don't like this skin. It's just kind of repeating the thing where Jarvan just kind of gets screwed out of his skins every now and then. But damn. Like, I might still play it because nobody's going to see this skin in a long time. Legitimately, at least. At least, because, you know, gemstones. But, I feel they could have done a lot better. And still, again, I didn't finish the controversy on the gemstones. Is that they seem to be lacking in quality or, you know, quality control, so to speak. They're, they have unfinished parts to, to them or that they sort of rushed them out the door. Because, again, not a lot of people are going to get these. So, might as well, why, why spend so much resources on them? So, yeah, unfortunately, I have to give this one a pass. Now, the tier list for the Jarvan skins, going from the worst to the best. The Obviously, if you haven't sort of caught on already because they kind of blatantly said it, Fanatic Jarvan is the unadulterated worst skin. It's boring, ugly, un uninspired, and you don't really feel anything when you play this skin. It's just so bland. Again, nothing to it. No offense to the, you know, Fnatic for winning season one, you know, congrats to them, but their skin line is poor. Then after that is Victorious Jarvan, because like I said, aside from, you know, the gloat, uh, the exclusivity of it and the fact that you can gloat about it, it is a painfully, painfully uh, ugly skin. It is atrocious to look at, it didn't get updated properly, its hair is ugly, it's, it's just... It's suit, like, everything is bad about it. It's just not that good. <laughs> and then afterwards, the surprise is Hextech Jarvan. Because unlike Darkstar Jarvan, this one feels even lazier. Like, it has updated visuals or visual effects, but they're, you know, pretty, you know, no, they're not really all that inspiring. It's just kind of whatever. The weapon is ugly. The face is an atrocity. 
and the color scheme is just not doing that for me so i just don't like this skin all that much it's splash art is amazing the skin not so much though then right after comes dark star jarvin and i would say this is where you get to the middle point because afterwards most of the other skins get points because they are thematically fitting to jarvin they're very simple minded and they just sort of work out dark star jarvin I just give it I do give it it's just credit initially I was way too hard on it when it first came out but it looks good its effects are okay and it's just mostly thematically it's very weak and the voice lines don't really work for it it's just on the middle of it right it's you know it's effective I guess for looking different but that's about it then comes Dragon Slayer Jarvan, because the Dragon Slayer line is one that would fit Jarvan, you know, hunting beasts, murdering the crap out of them, and then eventually it sort of led to this weird waifu-ness with Shivana, which I guess they retconned, but yeah, Jarvan is homies with Shivana, and they go killing her family, I guess, but it fits. It fits him pretty well. Then right after is Dark Force Jarvan, which I mostly give it points because its update made it really cool and I sort of underrated it for the longest time. But it looks cool, sleek, efficient, and in the map it looks pretty damn good. Or at least when I zoomed out, I mean. Then this is where the highest three come out. Commando Jarvan is just a very fitting skin line for him. You know, Commando, if, if it was more like a real world or kind of jungle thing there. Commando Jarvan skin is just well fitting. It toes the line between the comicliness of the old uh, skins and that kind of stuff, but it works out for him still. You can either take it serious, you can either take it jokey, but it's a good skin. And then this is where I would say comes a humongous separation between the skins. SSG Jarvan is the second best skin of the Jarvan line, and it's very close to the first one. But again, the separation from the second and the third is considerable because ssg jarvin is beautiful pro it's like i bought that skin when i saw it it's gorgeous very clean looking very sleek its weakness does come in from that it just sort of looks like trinomy or doesn't really look too jarviny uh but everything else works out on it it's a very pleasant skin to view very pleasant skin to play and this is one more can be said it's so you know a visual pleasure and that's something that a lot of skins don't really have they're kind of messy or clunky even if they're kind of cool and thematic and then obviously lubu jarvin is at the very top it looks cool it feels cool everything about it works I already you know gushed over it on its own little part of this video but you know, like I said, if you had taken Jarvan and transposed them to a more Asian, you know, country uh, in in lore wise, I could see him look like this. It's just a very elegant skin and even better with this prestige chroma, which it looks amazing. If, if anything, this is the skin line I think needs more chromas. <sighs> By the way, that's my opinion on the Jarvan skins. I hope you enjoyed this little rant, and maybe I'll do more if people respond to it well. I just like doing that on stream, so I felt like doing this in the video. Yeah, or in YouTube video form.